Good afternoon, everybody. We begin our blessing of the palm service at the festival of the church. So I would like you to turn everybody to back of the church. And uh, during the blessing, uh, Deacon Dan and myself will come around and bless your palms. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we have to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For we want to explain this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us come into the city of our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. <coughs> Almighty ever living God, sanctify us with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach them through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. to Jerusalem, to Bethany, in Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a coat tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, Why are you doing this? Reply, the master has need of it, and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found the coat tethered at a gate outside of the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the coat? They answered them just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. 
So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the ground, and others spread the leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him, as well as those following, kept crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate and celebrate Jerusalem where in the gospel we listen that Jesus Jerusalem, where people sang Hosanna to him and they spread their cloaks on the road and spread the leafy branches and it was a kind of welcome would give to a king after his victory in a war. So it shows that Jesus is a king and but different type of king. Kings usually would come on a, on, a, on a horse, but Jesus chose on a donkey. So it, it suggests that Jesus is a king of peace, peaceful king, and he's a servant king. So today we commemorate and celebrate Jesus' Solomon into Jerusalem, and we are going to sing, and the procession reminds of that kind of uh, uh, solemn reception that Jesus received in Jerusalem. Now we are going to sing and we begin our procession. Ride on, ride on in majesty Hark all the trust Savior, make pursue thy road with palms and scattered garments strewed. Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp, ride on to die. O Christ, thy triumphs now begin. Or captive death and conquered sin. Ride on, ride on in majesty, the enemies of the sky. Look down with sad and wandering eyes to see the approaching sacrifice. Let us pray. O Master, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. We may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his reigns and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit on God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear. And I have not rebelled 
have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Our response is, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, my God, God why, why have you, you abandoned, abandoned me? me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, if he loves him. My God, my God. My God. Why, Why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A power upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, oh, my, my God. God. Why, Why have you abandoned me? They divide my and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, be not far from me. O oh, my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, God why, why have you abandoned me? me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God. Why have, have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. 
So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not during the festival, for fear that there may be a riot among the people. When he was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfume oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor are with you. And whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, all in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, the teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed, and to say to him, one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish, for the Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the wine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you are shaken, for it is written, and the sheep will be dispersed. But I shall go before you to Galilee. 
Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine go not. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. And then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this, they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with his swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you, teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They left him naked, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, Even so, their testimony did not agree. 
The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them. And after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over, to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole court. They clothed him in purple and, weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, King of the Jews, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, 
dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine, drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, uh -huh. you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger James and of Joseph and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was a day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out, hewn out of the rock, when he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. 
Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. C.S. Lewis, the writer best known for his Narya series, used an expression which can be applied to Palm Sunday. The highest without there are two points that can be made. The first, in many human situations, the highest and the lowest are joined together. The birth is greeted with joy, but the passing of a parent can be a blessed, released from the old age's hardships, but are the silence that descends. Similarly, represents a high point in the Holy Week that we also heard of the coming passion and death of Jesus. What draw In our encoding low and painful points. The second point from Louis' expression is that some present us with a choice to follow either a higher or In our we can choose to be controlling and negative or humble. We see on that Jesus chose to enter on a donkey, a lonely rather than an impressive horse. He was the kind of leader that he was. So near to the English priest Henry Millman wrote the hymn Ride on, ride on in majesty. The hymn captures the ambivalence of today's Feast of Palm Sunday the combination of victory, the highest, and the tragedy, the lowest, of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. So let us today draw with the Palm Sunday or Passion Sunday, we begin the Holy Week. We celebrate the important mysteries of faith this week. We know on Holy Thursday, we commemorate the institution of the Eucharist and the priesthood in the context of the Last Supper. And we also Jesus washing the feet of the apostles and commandment to love one another. And on Good Friday, we celebrate the passion, crucifixion, and death of Jesus and his great sacrifice and suffering to save us from our sins. And on Easter Vigil, we celebrate and in the liturgy, there is a blessing of the fire, water, and renewal of baptism of promises, which is a sign of our desire to live a new life in Christ. 
So I would like to invite you all to all these Holy Week liturgies. And let us celebrate these awful mysteries. And maybe may we be filled with the God for each one of us. Please now stand and profess our faith in one God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God had not made consubstantial with the Father, to the him all things were made, for us is salvation. He came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. In this kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son, the Lord and the Lord, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now believe the needs of the church, needs of the world, and our own needs. That the church's celebration of a paschal mystery will deepen our faith and lead us to be unafraid to share the good news of salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations might choose to settle differences peacefully, rejecting the alternatives of war and violence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this holy week will find us returning again and again to this sacred place to offer praise and thanks to God whose only Son was sent to be our Redeemer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our we offer spiritual and corporal works of mercy for our most vulnerable sisters and brothers, recognizing that whatever we do for them, we do for our suffering Christ who redeems us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we may always be willing to help our family members, friends, neighbors, and strangers carry their crosses, knowing that the Lord recognizes their weight and is always willing to share our burden. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick will know the healing power emanating from the cross of Christ. And for all the prayer intentions listed in the book in the vestibule of our church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died will be surrounded by the saints in the heavenly kingdom, especially Donald Bismayer, father of Tammy Bean, grandfather of Sean and Connor Bean, all of our parish. Carolyn Palladino, mother of Colleen Nunzada, grandmother of Vincent and Joseph Nunzada, all of our parish. Mary Ann Steinmetz, grandmother of Jeff Frederick of our parish. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions recommended to our parish, in particular those of this Mass, Bob Pate, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own intentions, we pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, thank you for listening these prayers and the prayers that we carry in our hearts. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and our salvation. Give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, through Christ our Lord, for those suffered and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has worked, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so, with all the angels, we pray in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, have the full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are 
Let us now to come down and make them body and blood of Christ. May peace gives, we pray, but them like the dew fall, so that the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was and indeed willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks, brought it and brought it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, he took the chalice and once he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For my blood, the blood of the covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Let us now pray for our church, all the leaders and all the members of the church. Remember, Lord, throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of a charity together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Archbishop, all the clergy, religious, and the faithful, especially those who are persecuted for their faith. Let us also remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, Saint Martha, our patron, and all the saints who have pleased to you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, a God in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us all together say the Lord's Prayer as we prepare ourselves to receive the body of Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass us. And in this, Lord, we but deliver us from
deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Miserator, no peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Miserator, no Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Father, if this chalice cannot pass without my drinking it, your will be done. The body of Christ. Sometimes 
Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? him in the side. Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few announcements for our uh, parish families. The Boy Scout flyer sale is back. Please pick up a flyer on your way out. 
The Holy Week services can be found on our social media pages and in the bulletin. There will not, again, there will not be any Easter reservations needed. The cafeteria will be open for extra seating. Rice bowls can be dropped off in the back of church or brought to the parish office. Please drop them off before Easter. And there are sign-up sheets for all the ministers positions for Holy Week, Good Friday, Holy Thursday, Easter Vigil, and Sunday morning Easter in the back of church over to the right next to the uh, priest sacristy. Please take time and see if you can be of service. See the bulletin for more information, dates, and times. I look forward to the uh, Holy Week services. Holy Thursday, 7 p.m., Good Friday, 3 p.m. and 7 p.m., and Easter Vigil, 8.30 on Holy Saturday evening, 8.30 p.m., and on Sunday, 8.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. Thank you, everybody, for coming to celebrate this Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday. Hope you have a blessed week. The Lord be with you. Be with you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, sacred head surrounded by crown of piercing thorn, O oh, so wounded, reviled and put to scorn, death's pallid hue comes o'er thee, the glow of life decays. Yet angel hosts adore